Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Welcome, Terry Lanahan. We are so thrilled you're here for our We Choose to Thrive series. Would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your background. What brought you to the place that you are today? Oh, how deep do you want me to go? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Just give us a good overview of your story. Okay. My name's Terry. I'm 56 years old. I have three children and five grandchildren. Um, yeah, I live in Butte, Montana, and um, I'm a survivor of adult childhood sexual abuse or child abuse. Um, I'm an, a survivor of adult domestic abuse. Um, it's it's kind of hard. <laughs> um, what? Um... <laughs> We don't have to go too deep into it. Um, you've started sharing your story, and that's what's important. Yes. And you do it in the form of poetry, correct? Yes. Very cool. What got you to the place where you decided to start, start sharing? Um, you know, with I believe my poetry is a gift. And when there was no one to tell and no one to talk to about it, I was able to just, just write poetry to share my experience, strength, and hope. And I do believe it's a gift that I was given. Um, A big part of abuse is the isolation that you feel, um, Mm -hmm. the loneliness that you feel, and not having anyone to talk to or express your feelings. So poetry became my outlet for, um, you know, just getting my story out. And it's been a big process in my healing also. he or some sometimes i I have discovered that for me, writing has been my biggest healing I've ever mm. could have experienced me because too. we tend to hide our shame yes there's a lot of shame around it because we as victims, we typically think it's our fault mm-hmm. you know, yes. and, and until we work through that process and start giving it voice, do we start to realize that it's not so much our fault? Yes. And and so when was it that you discovered your that you had a vehicle for your healing process? It was actually when I was 26 years old and I started having flashbacks of my abuse and I ended up in treatment, a 6-week treatment program and um hearing words like flashbacks, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. I'd never been able to put a name to my craziness, if you want to call it that, I felt like I was going insane. Mm -hmm. And then they were able to name, you know, what what was happening to me. And that is when I started being able to begin to express what had happened to me and and how I felt and everything. Mm -hmm. So that is, that's when I first started channeling my story through my poetry is when I first started actually talking about it. And it, I, I become so desperate and so alone and isolated and depressed. And, um, you know, thank God for treatment programs because they really helped me walk through a lot of my pain mm-hmm. um, from my past. I, I totally understand. And I've, I have found that we, as abuse survivors, we need to stay really, really on top of the tools and the resources and watching for the triggers because there are triggers that happen that bring everything flooding back. Yes. And, and so when we understand which tool is our tool of choice for mm-hmm. some, it's doing artwork, some mm-hmm. it's dance, some of it's, some of us, it's either poetry or some form of writing. For me, mm-hmm. it was writing my story. Um, and then having the courage to share yes. the story behind it. Yes. The sense of if it's artwork, 
than putting a story to your artwork. And that's what We Choose to Thrive is about, is because there's many out there like us. Our statistics yes. are horrible. I know. Um, and, and, it, and they are not even as horrible as they are. They're not even accurate because so many of us keep our lips. Don't talk about it. Right. So you've come a long ways in your healing journey, and, and, and it's obvious mm -hmm. that, that you have. Um, other than your counseling and your poetry, were there any other tools that you tapped into that would that you were you could recommend to somebody that's starting down this journey? I am a, a volunteer advocate at the shelter here in B, Montana, and I've been um, with them for over 20 years, off and on, and that became another channel for me, um, working with these women and children, and. Um, seeing their pain but also seeing their strength and their courage on a day-to-day -day basis you know walking away from everything and everyone sometimes and uh it, that also gave me courage is to see these women it's amazing the strength that we have it is i just um attended an event a local event that was a, actually a fundraiser for our local shelter here and it was on Friday, and one lady got up and spoke. In fact, I just invited her to our, our Facebook group. And her, her courage to stand mm -hmm. up in front of such a huge group mm -hmm. and share her story was so touching and pretty amazing because there was several thousand in attendance oh, wow. at this event. And so it, it takes our voices starting to rise strong and us linking arms and supporting each other and being there for each other yes. in the hopes that, you know, we know that we can't stop what has already happened. Right. We can get the message out and provide a support system past the time that they that there's the need for an abuse shelter, past yes. the time it's the after years where those moments of uh, that weigh heavy on, our, on us. As, as to why it happened and all of the other things that that take place that's why we're joining arms to give that message that we can heal we can do well we can thrive yes that if nothing else maybe it will change the tide of the abuse itself because of the awareness that is being created but on the other side of it is there's nothing we can do to change the past but going forward we can link arms to help ourselves heal right Yes. So what words of wisdom would you share with somebody that just start just starting down this path, realizing they're they you know the actual occurrence of those events have passed and now they're dealing with the aftermath of whether it's depression, whether it's any number, all the the different things that you've already named it. What would you say to somebody that's just realizing that okay I got to stop this pain and I've got to, I've got to have some healing here. Oh, I just have to say it is painful, very painful when you start walking through um, the memories of the abuse and everything, but it is so worth it. The healing process is a beautiful process. It's an amazing process. I have a life today that I, I couldn't even imagine at one time and I just feel blessed and um and it all came through my recovery. And recovery was hard, it was a struggle. Yeah, not only did I deal with depression and anxiety, I turned to alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. to numb my pain, to sedate, to medicate. And um, so I had to, I got to a point where I had to quit drinking and using drugs and just start dealing with the pain of my past. But it's been a remarkable experience, it really has. And I do. I feel blessed, very blessed. You know, that's been really interesting to me as I've done this series and spoken to so many women. I've learned more about myself mm -hmm. um, by having these kind of conversations because I never, we keep it hidden so badly when we're, when we've gone past that and we don't really want to share, we don't want to talk about it. And right. we keep it's so hidden, but when we start to open up and to share, and we, we learn that now it's given me a whole different perspective on life. And when I see people going through things that 
kind of raise your eyebrows, like drug abuse, like sexual abuse, like mm -hmm. drug abuse, you know, alcohol abuse, depression. What's yes. behind that? There's something deeper behind what's going on on the surface in the now, right. you know? Yes. And, uh, and beginning to understand that, it puts a lot of pieces to the puzzle together and helps us to begin to know what we're looking at when we see these things happening, not only for ourselves, but for others. For others, yes, I agree. <laughs> Very good. Well, I'm so happy you're a part of this. Thank you. And I appreciate you including me. <laughs> well, it's, I've been watching what you've been doing, and you are a nice addition to our Facebook group. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the cover of, of the book. It's not done because as I add more people, I just got a rough <laughs> of what it's going to look like, but everybody's faces is on the cover. So oh, I'll, wow. I'll post that back into the Facebook group. Okay. Because, um, what I do is I take all of these videos and edit them and then um, get them transcribed to get put into the contents of the book, but I'm saving, then everybody has a copy of their own video. But then from there, we'll be, we're taking snippets out to make it part of our documentary series. Okay. And so it's powerful, it's good, and it takes, and like I said, it, it, like we both understand, it takes all of us joining our mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the strength of other women, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that opened the, the doors for me and, you know, put me on a path of recovery. So have you um, been keeping a book of all of your poetry? Yes. Because that can be put together into a book that can be published in the, when the time is right for you. Yes, I'm working on it now, actually. Very I'm going to create a space. Okay. If you need help, that's what I do by profession is oh, really? I, um, I help people go through that whole self-publishing part and then um, all, all the things, that, all the steps that need to be done and out of 25 authors I've worked with now, I forgot all but one to number one bestseller. Oh, wow. So, That's yeah. That's great. There's some techniques behind it. And, and so um, if you feel stuck or if you need help, um, I'd be happy to work with you on that. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank and you. One this story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www thewomanilove.com If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, Growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world? We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www. Dot the woman I love dot com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.